Hey everybody, it is Dean Z speaking to you from room 100 in Hutchins Hall at the University of Michigan Law School, aka the Jason L. Honigman Auditorium. And today I wanted to speak to you about the Supreme Court decision from last June in Students for Fair Admissions against Harvard and UNC. I'm going to guess that 99% of the people watching know what this decision is about, but just in case, and you know, just in the interest of teeing this up well, I want a brief um, overview. There are a number of higher ed institutions in this country uh, that are very selective. They get to make a lot of choices in admissions. They use um, a process of admissions called holistic admissions, where you're looking at the whole person, and they take into account many different factors about that person. So it's not just your test score and your grade point average. Uh, it is every aspect of you. One of those aspects traditionally has been race. Uh, that is one of the factors that schools have taken into account. That was uh, first a matter of Supreme Court ruling in a case from 1976 called Baki. Uh, and there have been a couple other cases since then, including the University of Michigan Law School uh, case, which is commonly called Gruder, um, handling what are the limitations on how schools can use race in this context. But in June of this year, the Supreme Court said, you know what? No more. Race is no longer one of the many factors a school can take into account in making an admissions decision. So that's where we are. As a practical matter for the University of Michigan, it is not, it is not going to affect us. Uh, for a little bit more than 15 years, public schools in the state of Michigan have, by state law, been forbidden from taking race into account in admissions. The same is true in California, Washington. Those are the, most, uh, the largest states that have those rules. They've been dealing with this for even longer. But that means that uh, for public institutions in the handful of states where race uh, has been banned as a factor in admissions, the schools have long ago grappled with it, adjusted to it, and put processes in place that they think give them the information they need about an applicant while still adhering to the law that forbids us from taking uh, race into account. That does not mean, although race is not a factor in admissions, anymore though, that does not mean that you as an applicant are prohibited from telling your story even if it involves race, all right? So I'm gonna lay a phrase on you that constitutional law types like to use, and that is, the phrase is race qua race, qua, Q-U-A. Where's my phone? I'm gonna define qua for you because I didn't know what it was the first 20 times I heard it, uh, but it means in the capacity of, as being. Uh, and basically what that means is just race as race, as like a factor by itself without any contextual information. So I'm not allowed to say uh, LSAT, GPA, race, those are the three things and uh, now I know all I need to know and I'm gonna admit you or deny you. Uh, but that doesn't mean you can't talk or think about race at all. So now I'm going to read to you from just Chief Justice Roberts' majority opinion on this point, in which he says, nothing in this opinion should be construed as prohibiting universities from considering an applicant's discussion of how race affected his or her life, be it through discrimination, inspiration, or otherwise. Blah, blah, blah. A benefit to a student who overcame racial discrimination must be tied to that student's courage and determination or a benefit to a student whose heritage or culture motivated him or her to assume a leadership role or attain a particular goal must be tied to that student's unique ability to contribute to the university. In other words, the student must be treated based on his or her experiences as an individual, not on the basis of race. What does that all boil down to? That means you should tell your story. Right. If your story is whatever it is, if you wanted to tell a story last year uh, that involved uh, something about you and your racial identity, that is the same story you should tell this year. The onus is on the school 
the administrators reading your application and making decisions to make sure they are not misusing the information that you have provided. And I can remember very, very well when we went race blind in 2007 uh, that it was, it was harder to read applications. I, I was used to reading in one way, and now I had to read in another way. Uh, it's sort of, I, I think it's sort of like uh, when I, I used to, when I learned how to drive, I drived on uh, an automatic transmission, and then in law school, I learned how to drive manual transmission, and the first few weeks was uh, a little rough, you know? I, I was, getting into the car every day was a big adventure. I had to think about everything I was doing because it was no longer autopilot. I was not doing it, you know, I could have driven in my sleep with an automatic transmission, and then switching to manual made it much more challenging. By the same token, when I was reading in 2007 after we went race blind, I would read an application and I would think, okay, this person told me about their race. Am I thinking about this in a way that is allowable or not? Do I want to admit them? You know, how much of a role is race playing in here and in what way? And it really slowed down my reading. So that's a footnote there. You, I would. I would be prepared to be patient this, this cycle. I think that, uh, now maybe everybody else is more clever than I am, but I, I think it will take people uh, in admissions offices around the country longer to figure out how to implement this and to make sure that they are you know, honestly uh, adhering to the edict that we are all supposed to follow now. Um, so just be patient. Schools have also you know, in an effort to make sure that they are seeking. I mean, I think, frankly, race is important, in my opinion, in and of itself in this country because of our history. But it also is a, a proxy for other things, so, uh, and for other kinds of diversity. And I think schools are changing their applications to try to make sure that they are no longer, they're not able to rely on race, so they're asking new questions to make sure that they are getting these, at these other elements of diversity. Most particularly, I would say socioeconomic diversity. So schools have, many schools have added questions about, uh, are you a first generation college or law student? Uh, many schools have added questions about whether you received Pell Grants. Uh, many schools have um, asked if you are added questions about whether you've been a, ever been in a pipeline program uh, helping you prepare for law school, so on and so forth. Uh, and so that will be a little bit different aspect of the application, but from your point of view, I don't think it will make a big difference. You were going to answer these questions, and now you're still going to answer these questions, and maybe there's a couple new ones, but they're pretty straightforward. Some schools have added new essays or changed their prompts for the personal statement. That might be a little more challenging to you. I think it is important whenever you're writing a personal statement, you need to make sure you are following the instructions of the school in question. So you'll need to read all of those carefully. And if they are different enough, it may be that you have to write different essays for different schools, which is certainly um, a hardship on you. But I don't think that will be the case for, for the vast majority of schools. And by the same token, it was always a good idea if a school offered you the opportunity to write an additional essay, it was always a good idea to try and take that opportunity. It is still a good idea. Uh, the fact that maybe the topics have changed or uh, they've added new ones from the applicant's point of view, I don't think will make a big difference. But let's talk a little bit now about how to implement you know, this paragraph from Justice Roberts. I know that he talks about discrimination inspiration or otherwise. So there's two ways in which your personal identity, whether you're talking about race or any other aspect of it, um, there's two big ways in which your identity might affect what you want to tell a school. And one is sort of the, the positive story, the inspiration part of the story, and one of the is a more negative story, you know, the discrimination story. And, but even the discrimination part, the negative part, the bad thing that comes from certain identities, you want to tell that in a positive way. You want to talk about how it was an obstacle you overcame, how you, you, know, you learned something from it, that it, it, it taught you something positive, um, or simply that you in, endured it and became stronger as a result. And I, and I worry a little bit because I hear people talking about this issue of um, you know, talking about race in applications now, and they talk a lot about adversity versus diversity. 
and they are encouraging people to talk about the adverse effect of their racial identity on, on the applicant as an individual. And I think that can often go wrong. For one thing, I don't think you should ever feel obligated to talk to me as a stranger or whoever is reading your application about what may very well be the most difficult aspect of your life, right? Something that you maybe don't want to share with everybody you ever talk to. Uh, and I feel like there's a certain pressure being created for people to do that. And I don't think you should feel, if that's not the story you want to tell, you should not tell it. Because for one thing, it's nobody's business, and I'm sure you have other stories to tell. And for another thing, if it's a story you don't want to tell, you probably aren't going to tell it well. And, and you definitely, you know, what you want to do in an application is to present yourself as somebody who is going to be an asset to the community you're applying to, an asset to the profession. Uh, and that's, that should be a, a positive story. So, you know, thinking about something that you can end on a, a solid note, a happy, not, maybe not a happy note, but a positive note, right? Uh, that's, that's very important. And so then there's the inspiration side of it. That's a little uh, less fraught, frankly. Uh, so if there are stories you can tell about, you want to talk about your racial identity and there are stories you can tell that, you know, I got into a certain line of work because of my racial identity or I want to... Um, you know, pursue a particular educational path because of what I learned because of my racial identity. That it, or you know, I, I just developed this particular skill set because of my racial identity. That's all great stuff. And uh, and if you want to talk about that, as I say, don't feel like the Supreme Court has told you you can't do that. That is not what they said. As I say, it is on the is the responsibility of the file readers and the decision makers to use the information that you provide in a legally compliant way. Okay, I think that is all I want to say about that. Thanks as always for listening. And about this topic, I mean, I'm, this is always the case. I always say if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below or email us at law.jd.admissions at umich.edu. But I'm gonna say that triple for this one. This is, this is a big deal, this is a big change. And I would love to answer your questions about it. I, as I say, I've been thinking about this my entire career in admissions. Uh, from the time I started, which was when we were in the middle of the lawsuit uh, that I mentioned, Gruder, to six or seven years later, when we went race blind, to today, where uh, I spent a lot of time talking to colleagues at other schools and being on panels and talking about what our experience has been. I think about this a lot, and I would love to share anything that is of interest to, to you. Um, if I can. So please email, comment, yada, yada, yada. All right. Thanks as always to Dustin Johnston and wherever you go, go blue.